Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about Load Runner Tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we are moving into the next component of our Load Runner which is called as Controller. Just for your information, Controller is a component which basically applied loads on the system or the script which you prepare as a part of your fusion. Here today in this tutorial, we'll be actually getting a quick overview of the controller and a basic understanding that what exactly controller is all about and what exactly you can find under the controller. And soon after that, with our next tutorials, we'll be getting into each of the important options by practically working on that. So let's quickly get started and understand what exactly is controller with a practical navigation in our tutorial today. As a part of this tutorial, we are getting started with the next component of LoadRunner called as Controller. Now in this tutorial, we will be understanding what is Controller all about and a quick overview of the Controller navigation. In order to get started, the number one thing is of course to go to your shortcut and launch the Controller panel. This is the launch Controller panel which you have on your desktop. And of course, there will be three different icons for three different components that is Vuegen, Controller and Analysis. If in case you have any issues related to your license on the Controller part, you will definitely be first prompted that you do not have a valid license to get started. Otherwise, you can definitely go ahead and do your licensing part using the license utility of the load runner. So here we are just looking forward to launch it and as far as you have a valid license with you, you can definitely go ahead and look forward to start working on this. Before we talk about this window, let me just quickly also showcase you that what exactly is the load runner license utility. So if you have this particular app installed by default, so click on this particular window and just say yes to it. And you would be shown with a window which is going to show you the list of your available licenses right now. So if you see, I'm using a community license which is available for unlimited in terms of all these other protocols and there is expiration that that's going to be expiring in the six months of time. Sorry, the two months of time, which is 60 days. And uh, also you have a limitation on that. That is, you can make use of only 50 virtual users to run your test. Now, in case you don't have a license, what you can do, you have an option here, sign up for the free license. Now, this button will be enabled to you if you don't have any of the valid licenses here with you. And you just have to sign up with all your details in order to have a quick license listed automatically. You don't have a verification mail. You don't have any kind of uh, intimation to be done. You just have to fill up the form and submit and you will have the licenses by default. In order to get started with controller, the very first thing is that the controller is the component which is licensed under Load Runner. ViewGen is a license free component. Please make a note of that. Even if you don't have any licenses, you can work on ViewGen for lifetime without any cost involved in it. But when it comes to the controller, you have to have a license because that's the main part of the load runner. Without a controller license, you cannot perform a performance test. If you remember, so far in ViewGen, we have just created a script and that's not a performance test. The performance is done when you apply the load and the load can only be applied in a controller component of the load runner. That's where controller is something which is licensed and at the same time analysis is also licensed because it helps you to analyze any particular performance test outputs. So as far as your license are concerned, you only have it for controller and analysis. The moment you launch your controller, the very first pop up which will be displayed to you is to select a new scenario where you have two different options that is manual scenario and goal oriented scenario. The manual scenario allows you to create your own scenario and apply the load, decide when the user starts, when the user stops, and duration for the execution, and run the test. Whereas goal-oriented scenario, you define the goal for the execution. That is, what is that you want to achieve as an expected outcome for a particular scenario, and the scenario will be designed by the load runner itself. We'll be talking about more in these details when we come to their respective tutorials. Right now, we're just talking about a quick navigation and overview of that. Also, you have an option to pick up the load runner scripts, system or unit test or JMeter scripts as you have the licenses for all these things. That's the reason you have find this option. If in case you just have a license for load runner scripts, you won't find the other two options at all. Also, at this point, you're supposed to select a script which you want to do the performance testing with. So if you have saved your script accordingly, you will find all the list here and you can just select and import that into the scenario. 
and with that you can configure the test and run a performance test. Also you have options to browse and locate your file or locate your script. You can record instead right from here and it will launch your ViewGen to record the script and also you can import the script from the ALM. Also to add here there is a button here called as show at startup this window that is the new scenario option because if in case you don't want to be popped up every time and you want to continue with where you left last time you can disable this button so that this pop-up new scenario does not appear on your screen and you can always come to the file and get started with opening your existing scenario and test so right now we will just press ok in order to enter controller you need a script press ok and the moment you press OK, it will start preparing the environment for you so that you can start setting up your performance test and run that. Today we are just talking about the overview of controller. So we will not be running any tests, but of course we will be understanding that what exactly a controller is all about. In the beginning, the very first thing is a design tab at the bottom. Here, the design tab allows any individual to set up the performance test and run it in other tab called as run. So designing includes a lot of features, for example, the scripts which are called in the scenario. So right now you see that there is one particular script which you find here and you can definitely run all the tests on this particular script. But if in case you want to run multiple scripts together, you just have to import it. Now you may wonder that, okay, was I supposed to call all of them in the beginning itself? No, you can still drop down and select your scripts from here as well. Or you do have an option to browse your existing tests from other locations. So you can even call a test even after launching your controller and you can just import them whatever you want to make use of. There's also a certain thing called about the load distribution. Now definitely the load distribution will be distributed among different scripts accordingly. If you have selected to manually distribute it, you will have the decision to make that how the load will be distributed between the scripts. So sometime I can call five scripts, 10 scripts and so on to distribute it among the number of users. And that's what we are referring to the word load here. So the load means here the number of users who will be working. Also you can configure your load generator here, which is basically the server name, which will be listed automatically. You just have to select it here and press OK. Now it will apply load from this particular server and back to the server again. So until unless you have configured the load generator, which is the fourth component of load runner, to apply loads, it will not run a performance test. On the right hand side, you do have service level agreements where you can define certain uh, sub SLAs, which will be definitely to talk about the expected results. You can set up your thresholds for the transaction response time, error per second, total hits, average hits per second, total throughput, average throughput. So these are the six which are available. Plus for transaction response time, you have options like percentile or average. And you can set this up before running your test as a part of design window in order to map them during the execution and then output based on these in expected inputs will be displayed to you in the analysis window. We again will be definitely looking into this in more detail. Plus on the left again you have a scenario schedule that how you want to run this. This is the place where you define that do you want to run with real world schedule where you get the freedom of running a test with your specific duration. Whereas you also have an option of basic schedule which will pick up the set of iteration which you define during the execution. So this automatically reduces our one option that is duration to be defined manually. So you only go with run until completion and each user will perform the number of iterations you have defined in ViewGen and stop execution. But if you go for the real world solution that is real world schedule, it will allow you to define this in order to go ahead with the custom defined duration and you can make use of it. For example, if I want to run a test for an hour long or maybe two hours long, I can define it in the real world schedule, but not in the basic schedule. The second tab here is the run tab where first you run the test after designing it in terms of scenario. And definitely you have some of the buttons here to start the scenario, to stop the scenario, to reset the users back to the initial column and look at the details of each user during the execution. Or if in case any failure happens, you can look at the details of that. Plus, you can particularly run and stop a particular B user during the execution as well. Plus, you will find all the statistics here, the graph being generated at the window here. And of course, all your measurements will be listed below. So when we run a test, you will find them. On the top, you do have the statuses for each of these uh, execution. And of course, the different status are for the V users. So V users will be initially in down section. If they have been provoked as per the scenario, they will be initially in pending 
as far as you have defined that only two users at a time or the application does not accept all the users. Initializing means they are busy executing B user in it. Ready means that you have asked them to start together, but you have asked them to initialize in intervals. So the people who have already initialized will wait in the ready column and the other users will sign in. Generally, the init function is all about launch and login. So I can define multiple conditions to define when, how they launch and login, how they perform the action part and how they log out. So if you have provided the condition as that initialize an interval, but run simultaneously, then the initialize users will wait in ready column and then move to run together. The run of column is all about executing action. So if you found number of V users in run column, it means that these users are busy executing the action part. And this can be definitely iterated if you recall your learning from Vuegen. Rendezvous point is basically to stop all the users at a particular point in order to perform an action simultaneously. Passed, number of transactions passed, number of users failed, number of users had an error, and of course the gradual exiting. That gradual exiting basically means that the users have completed their task and gradually moving to V user end. Once they are busy executing V user end, they will be put under the exiting column. That means all the users here in this column are executing v user end action and once everything completes the stop button will show you or stop column will show you the v user terminated the third option is actually an add-on which is basically for the diagnostics and they ask you to install another add-in which will definitely be adding more value in order to analyze if there are anything wrong during the performance measurements so this was a quick overview of entire controller and we'll be getting started shortly with the next tutorial on controller again. And we will definitely be exploring all the options to design a scenario and run the scenario. So look forward to the same. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.